Well, this is it. I'm bringing the car in to the uh, mechanics to get the uh, supercharger finally installed after all these years of anticipation and waiting. And uh, this is the last time that this engine bay is going to look like this. Uh, hopefully it'll look a lot better when we're done. <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen. Uh, as you can see, uh, it is done now, but uh, certainly not when I thought it was going to be done. And there's, it's complicated why it didn't happen, you know, on time. I mean, just I tried really hard. I talked to multiple mechanics. I couldn't get anybody to actually commit and follow through and actually do the work, uh, as surprising as that may sound. Um, but finally, after all this waiting, I finally found somebody to do the job, finish it off, and it didn't even take that long. It took 48 hours, actually. And judging from what you can see here, uh, that should make sense because there's really not a whole lot going on here. Uh, there wasn't a lot of work to be done, really. Uh, a little bit of planning, a little bit of welding and, and such, but uh, certainly nothing that uh, would justify waiting so many months to, uh, to get the job done. But, it, but it's done, and that's what, that's what makes me happy at the end of the day is that I can finally move on to the next phase of the project. Um, as you can see, this doesn't quite resemble the setup that I showed you all in, uh, in video one. And uh, again, you know, planning is nice and it looks, looks great and all that on paper, but uh, once you get into the real work, uh, certain concessions have to be made, uh, certain considerations, uh, you know, that I didn't, that I didn't make, uh, you know, have to be uh, dealt with and stuff and stuff like that. So um, instead, the mechanic and I discussed, uh, you know, how to do this properly and we came up with, a, with an alternative that I'm pretty happy with. So I'll just sort of explain how this is going to work. It's still going to be kind of a two-mode setup, but not dynamically two-mode the way I had it before, where it automatically switches back and forth between naturally aspirated and boosted. Uh, this time around, there's actually two different intake setups that have to be manually disconnected and, and, and swapped uh, in order to switch modes, which is not necessarily a problem for me because... If I feel like doing some spirited driving or going to the track or whatever, uh, I can put this setup on. And if I just want to drive the car around casually uh, the rest of the time, I can put the other setup on. And the other thing that's great about this is that if I want to, I can still run this naturally aspirated. The only problem with, with doing that, it's not really a problem, it's just sort of something that's uh, not the greatest, is that I'm sucking air through the turbo, or through the, the turbo housing. So by doing that, I'm probably going to lose some horsepower, uh, because it has to, it actually, it's actually going to end up spinning the, the impeller probably when it's off. Uh, you know, not, not the biggest problem in the world. I mean, it's just, it just means I'm going to have some loss in power, possibly some drivability issues from lag and stuff like that. I'll have to tune it. I'll have to see how it actually drives. But if it doesn't drive well, I'll just take this off and put the other setup on. And uh, I'll get to that in a second after I've sort of gone through this. So this is the boosted setup, obviously. You can see over there, you've got the gray electronics control box which you've seen before you've still got the you know the uh the, the uh brushless dc controller in there the um relays and shit that i need for uh you know uh, activating the you know tricking the intake the intake air temperature sensor and stuff like that it's all in there got your three phases out which i have to connect still got the two dc lines in the back there you can just barely see them there uh, I've already sort of uh, started to work on that. I'm, uh, I've got a ground connection here to the chassis that I just installed today, and um, the other line has to be connected to the uh, to the batteries in the back through a large cable that I've already got routed. So that's just got to be soldered. And um, you know, there's a lot of wiring, general wiring that needs to be done. Uh, I have to connect these these three supercharger cables to the uh, to the posts. Uh, so I need to trim the wires and, you know, do proper safety, you know, uh, crimping and, and taping and a bunch of stuff like that. Um, once that's all hooked up, I have to connect my actual controller box, start doing a bunch of diagnostics from inside the car, make sure all the sensors are reading properly and that the actual control system activates this thing properly. So um, basically this video is focused on the physical installation, showing you what the setup is is capable of doing now and um, 
well, it's not capable of doing anything, but I'm just saying, like, this is this is what the physical setup looks like, and once it's complete, you know, it's going to work this way, right? And then the next video is going to show you the actual uh, running tests where, you know, the car is actually driving and it's tuned up and all that, and you can see the performance and you can see the, you know, the control system at work. So just have to bear with me a little bit longer, be a little bit more patient, and the next video will be a lot more interesting than this one because this is obviously not running yet but you know just want to show you all the features so i got a clamp back here bracket custom bracket was fabricated and bolted to the pillar here so that uh, i can keep this box nice and sturdy and i'm a little bit nervous about the proximity of all this stuff to the positive battery terminal but i'm going to take extreme caution to make sure that it's all isolated and that there's no rubbing or anything going on i'm going to do my best uh, but I think, you know, given the space in the engine bay, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. So I'm just going to be very careful. And uh, here's a supercharger. And it's got the cone filter. goes through this uh, silicone adapter here, a 4-inch. And then you've got the existing stock mass airflow harness here, which I don't really need because I'm running my car in speed density mode, um, which is open loop. And for that, you don't need a MAF sensor. However, the temperature sensor is also bundled into this. It's like a one-piece unit, so it's got the temperature sensor integrated in there. And I do need that for, for speed density. So uh, rather than rip this thing all apart, I just had them fashion a custom you know, uh, adapter flange for this, and then you can just plug it right in. And the naturally aspirated pipe also has that. Um, so that goes back to your computer. Got your blow-off valve here. I've got a little bit of work to do on the blow-off valve because they didn't um, they didn't tee it into the vacuum line, but that's no big deal. I think uh, I've already got the T on order. It should be coming soon. I'm just going to cut into this vacuum line here, put the T in there, bring the hose to the vacuum nipple here, and then when I don't need it, I can disconnect it and plug it. Uh, I've got the plug already, so um, I should just be able to actually pull the hose off from there, put the plug on there, and I can run without it. Um, so that's that, and then if we keep moving along the pipe here, we've got the uh, nitrous spray nozzle and a bung that they've welded in, it, welded in there, so that's connected. So that'll just spray right before the throttle body, which is exactly how you want it, keeping it away from all the sensors back there. That's the good part about that, and it's already pointed forward and everything fits really good. They put this extra bung in here that I didn't ask for. Uh, this is kind of like if I wanted to run like a, a discrete temperature sensor like one of these simple two wire temperature sensors which is actually what this is uh, because I didn't have a cap so rather than using a cap I actually used a temperature sensor to block the hole off uh, so it's not connected to anything but um, I don't really want to use this right now if I if I ever thought to use it in the future I've got it uh, but right now it's just blocked off and then uh, it goes through another silicone adapter and basically into the throttle body. So really not a whole lot going on there. The clearance is very tight. Uh, there's not a lot of clearance. It's right up against the radiator hose here. When you shut the hood, the hood, uh, what do you call it, the, the carpet, this gray stuff here, is kind of um, impinging on these wires here. So I've tried to sort of shimmy and push everything into a nice comfortable position where it won't. Uh, push too much on that and it doesn't but maybe from the engine vibrating and moving back and forth there might be some rubbing so I'll have to see how that goes if it's if it's no good I can always destroy this whole connector I can just cut this off and just sort of individually take the wires and connect them maybe at a right angle like a 90 degrees or something like that and I can I can take off like maybe three quarters of an inch of uh, height by doing that if I need to so that'll be something that I'll just have to test it's not a problem for now it's this is something that would be a problem after many many miles of rubbing and then it might be an issue but for now it's perfectly safe uh, so I'm just gonna run it like this for now and just see how it goes and uh, oh yeah and then of course so the, the supercharger has got this nice custom mount here with a with a rib for for stiffness uh, and it's just bolted to what looks like the uh, looks like an idler pulley uh, mount here and it's got a couple bolts and they just reused those bolts and just mounted this so this is a custom piece everything's been powder coated looks really nice I'm very happy with the aesthetics of it although that wasn't really my priority 
I didn't care so much about how it looked, but uh, it's nice that they went to the extra effort and did that for me. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty much everything here is, you know, almost ready to go. Like I said, vacuum hookup and uh, and uh, some other minor minor stuff, and, and the wiring, of course. The wiring is the big problem. The electronics and all that has always been the bottleneck. So. I have to continue to do that, get that working, and then, of course, there's going to be a lot of tuning involved, just driving the car and adjusting the fuel map to sort of uh, get used to this setup because the old setup, the volumetric efficiency, the, the tuning of the pipes and all that is different. So I need to do all the fuel map all over again. But, you know, a few days' worth of that, and I should be, should be all dialed in. And then uh, let me just quickly show you the other setup that I could run if everything doesn't work and I just need, you know, a car to drive. So here's the other piece, and I'll try to get a good picture of it. Uh, nothing to it, really. Uh, it's still got the bungs on it that the other piece has, just in case I want to, you know, move everything from, from one pipe over to the other. And it's, of course, still got the, uh, the mass airflow adapter on the top there and, uh, and a cone filter. So this just... This just goes right where this is, right? It just substitutes. You pull the, the, the piece on the right off, keep the silicone coupler, jam this in, and you're good to go, right? And it just hangs off the engine like that, pretty much. And uh, over here, I had to remove the um, PCV, the positive crankcase ventilation line, and I put a breather and uh, zip-tied it to, the, um, to where the ECU is. Uh, so that just gets that out of the way. Um, but yeah, this thing just plugs in like this and, and, and you're good to go, right? Um, so yeah, uh, it's a dual mode setup still, but a little bit more effort to swap back and forth. It's not quite as high tech and convenient as I wanted it to be. But you know what? When you have these grandiose visions of, of these fancy ideas that you want to employ and, and, they, and they, they seem to look like they, like they should work you know, from an engineering perspective, but nobody's ever tried doing it before, and the mechanics are kind of, you know, nervous about getting involved in something so complicated. Uh, it's probably wise to just, you know, say maybe next time, right? If you're not, if you're not going to do it yourself, then it's probably not going to get done right. If somebody else is doing it for you and based on some complex instructions and all that, so safer that I just, uh, you know, take my first big project, uh, you know, easy and, and just do it this way. And I'm still going to have a lot of fun driving a car, and you know, with the five or six pounds of boost I get out of this thing, it should be really uh, uh, quite a beast uh, when it's when it's fully tuned in. I should be getting somewhere in the in the neighborhood of around 600 to let's say 620, 630 horsepower ish, something around there. That's my that's my estimate, but uh, I'll have to dyno it and uh, maybe do some quarter mile runs and stuff like that to see how the real world performance stacks up against the theoretical, right? But uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for being patient. Thanks for hanging with me all this time and waiting patiently for, for this next video. It took forever to make, but uh, um, yeah, as you can see, things are finally moving forward and now it's all up to me. So I'm not waiting for other people. I'm just, you know, I'm my own bottleneck at this point. So all I got to do is just take the amount of time I need. The weather's nice, it's a good time of year so I can, I can work on this thing at my leisure. And like I said, just finish up the electrical, make sure everything's safe, and uh, and get the electronics and computer systems to play nice. And then, you know, barring any unforeseen circumstances, hopefully within a few weeks, you know, maybe a month or so, I should be able to get this thing on the road working, you know, reliably, automatically, and I should be able to show you a video of that. And that will be kind of cool for both me and for you. So again, thanks a lot for all your support. Hit that like, subscribe button, and bell notification and all that stuff and keep me, uh, keep me going so that I can keep doing these videos and uh, pumping out new information for you. Okay, really excited to see this project completed, so I'll see you then, and uh, we'll have some fun. Talk to you later.